Truth be told, some people just aren't very good at their jobs. But some designers are so bad at their jobs, whether through bad intentions, carelessness, or sheer unadulterated stupidity, that the results of their bad designs truly earn them a personal suite in Satan's basement. So from terrible toilets and unnerving amusements to horrendous home improvement fails, stay tuned as we check out some of the crummiest creations by designers who should go to hell for their ideas. If you ask me, the bathroom should be a warm and inviting place for you to do your dirty business and scroll, 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 of course. But with many terrible home designers spawning the most wretched water closets imaginable, it seems nothing is sacred anymore. Take, for example, this tile job that was evidently a last-minute fix to accommodate a toilet too big for the space. There's not much aesthetic value in hacking out a huge chunk of the wall and, may I add, not very neatly. Likewise, this next designer similarly plunged their potty into the wall, presumably to save space. Indeed, the presentation is marginally better here, though the overall result is nonetheless oddly unnerving. Not to mention much less practical should the cistern need repairs. But for all the impractical and poorly fitted toilets in the world, there is but one lavatory more tragic than the rest. I present to you this beastly bog. Not only is this toilet haphazardly boxed in with tiles, presumably making it super uncomfortable and gross to do your business on, but worse yet, the seat is at an awkward tilt. I'd rather wear one of my adult diapers than go potty on this. Oh, uh, wait, what? Did I say adult diapers? <laughs> Let's move on. Using the toilet is a very private act, so you can imagine the feeling of being watched, like alongside this urinal, can be pretty unnerving. I mean, it wouldn't be so bad if Jeremy Renner didn't have such an expression of disgust and judgment. Hey, Hawkeye, it's average size, all right? But if that wasn't intense enough, check out this almost transparent bathroom door that one Redditor found in an Airbnb. Obviously, the designer of this door didn't account for the extreme levels to which a child will go to to not allow their mom one moment of peace to poop. But if that wasn't exposing enough, then feast your eyes on this very public toilet. I guess this is an effective way of showing when a toilet is occupied. You could argue it would be acceptable for us guys to go tinkle here, but not if you're a trousers all the way down guy like me. Now I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume that if you don't like going potty in plain sight, then you probably won't be a huge fan of this strange staircase bathtub. As to which nutjob is responsible for installing a whole ass bathtub on their hardwood, easily made slippery staircase, well, I dread to think. Truly living life in the danger zone. Speaking of slip hazards, check out this sink that some numbskull put together, failing to see that the basin is far too small for the faucet's projection. I mean, at least it's perfect for washing the floor. Oftentimes, designers will attempt to generate ideas to make processes easier, but of course, to varying degrees of success. Our next designer had the strange space-saving idea to incorporate a toilet roll holder onto a toilet seat. Only being positioned at the front, the resulting design is not only uncomfortable when seated, but also prime target for, you know, any yellow dribbles that may or may not occur. Speaking of which, cleaning a toilet isn't exactly most people's idea of fun. However, with this plunger slash toilet brush design spotted in Ikea, cleaning the crapper just got a whole lot more unsanitary. I mean, good luck picking that thing up without accidentally touching one of the dirty danger zones at either end. It's really a three-in-one design if you consider the complimentary E. coli. But while we're on the topic of poop, it's hard to understand what the designer's intentions behind this bathroom counter were, if not recreating smeared feces. At least it automatically covers the mess the next time grandma has an accident. And now, bringing these bizarre bathroom designs to an end, I'd like to introduce you to what I'm calling the Terrible Toilet Awards. And the nominees for Most Terrible Toilet of the Year are... Barbie Poo. The toilet that some monster decided to turn into a barbecue and drinks cooler combo. Terror Tiles, the bathroom designed to evoke the feelings of a mental breakdown. Dental Mudslide, the sink toilet combo that creates the perfect slide to transport your toothbrush to the toilet. And finally, the Throne Room. 
the toilet that allows you to poop from a great height. And the winner is... Barbie Poo! It was a close one, but this toilet cooking station's unmatched lack of hygiene really tipped it over the edge. Now don't get me wrong, I'm a huge advocate for self-expression and all that jazz. However, it seems there are some fashion crimes that are simply too criminal to not comment on. Case in point, these couture cow hoof revolver heels. My question is, at what point between stitching up a cow hoof and attaching a gun did the designer think, yeah, there's a gap in the market for these. Talk about hot to trot, right? With a similar lack of compassion for animals, check out this Animal Cruelty Club hoodie. One designer attempted to parody the popular brand Anti-Social Social Club with the slogan, Anti-Animal Cruelty Club. However, failing to anticipate the placement of the hood, the result was seemingly pro-animal cruelty. Even funnier, check out this t-shirt that was intended to read Super Hitters. Though again, due to the designer's incompetence, it actually reads Super Hitters, which is probably the name of the group of people responsible for that countertop we saw earlier. Speaking of poop-infused fashion, what do you think to these brown tie-dye socks? Really seems like smeared human Nutella is totally in right now. I guess some ideas just seem better in our heads. On that note, take a look at this tattoo that was intended to be leopard print, but looks more like mini burgers or some horrible infection. It's true what they say, animal print is hard to pull off. Back to some terrible fashion choices though, and this designer's pretentious attempt to be clever achieved the opposite. Using music notation, they tried to spell out band geek. But if the designer truly were a band geek, then they'd know that what they'd actually spelt was band bug -geek. You see, on a bass clef stave, from the bottom line to top line, the notes follow G A B C D E F G A. Meaning to spell the word geek, it would look something like this. Seems that whoever designed this likely forgot that they were writing in bass clef. As if it were treble clef, it would be perfectly legible. See four years of being in school choir, you'll learn a thing or two about music notation. Ha! Who's a loser now? Actually, don't answer that. T-shirt fails, however, come in all shapes and sizes. And none exemplify this better than this T-shirt of Bella Swan from Twilight. Sure, it may look fine now, but Rest assured, when worn, Bella looks much less like a vampire than she does Quagmire's long-lost daughter from Family Guy. Giggity giggity. Moving swiftly on, check out this necklace. Designed to be a group friendship necklace, each friend has a slice of pizza which, when together, forms a whole pizza. And while its general hideousness isn't necessarily up for discussion, you'll also notice that the final piece doesn't actually fit in. Sucks to be that friend, huh? Moving on, dysfunctional design is in full swing here with Gucci's almost $500 swimsuit that is, get this, not suitable for swimming. Yep, the iconic Italian fashion house generally designed a swimsuit which they said, quote, we advise that you do not wear it to swim. All that money for the product not to do the one thing its name implies it can do? I'm afraid I have no choice. Gucci, your entire brand is here by sentence to eternity in... <sighs> Unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know that Disney is on a quest to remake all their animated classics in live-action form. Unfortunately, though, it appears aesthetic pleasantness and artistry has taken a backseat to realism, which can certainly be seen in the character designs for Sebastian and Flounder in the 2023 live-action Little Mermaid. Now, viewer discretion advised, there will be a jump scare. So Sebastian and Flounder went from this to this. I'll give the designers here some credit at least. They've got a real talent for sucking all of the visual personality and likability out of their characters. But the Little Mermaid's characters aren't the only ones that have been debauched by the terrors of live action. Exhibit B, Beauty and the Beast. While some viewers claimed Emma Watson's acting and singing left a lot to be desired, her character's toy counterpart is substantially more dreadful. There's just something so unnerving about it. In fact, the doll's design was so bad that Noel Cruz, an Instagrammer who creates custom figures, decided to give it a much-needed photorealistic makeover. Safe to say, she's looking a lot more Belle now. 
and it seems no princess is safe from poorly designed merchandise either. Just get a load of Cinderella on this jigsaw puzzle. Failing to see the unfortunate placement of the jigsaw, this designer left poor old Cindy begging her fairy godmother for a rhinoplasty as opposed to a pair of glass slippers. From huge snouts to huge, um, straws? Buzz really is going to infinity and beyond with this incredibly inappropriate cup design. With the crossed arms and smug expression, it's hard to believe that the designer did this unintentionally. Nevertheless, best to not make eye contact. Something else you might not want to make direct eye contact with is this terrifying chocolate SpongeBob. Lest you want you and your family to fall victim to its eternal curse. Whoever thought an edible cartoon would become your new sleep paralysis demon? Well, I've got another one for you. Ever wanted to see a Where Are They Now of Pokemon? Yeah, the fame really sent Pikachu off the rails. Ash has since filed a restraining order, and who can blame him? On to yet more inappropriate designs for children, in this 18th century Carrington Bowles alphabet illustration has some unexpectedly adult themes. All I'm gonna say is that it's been a long time since anyone has shown me the letter M. I did once manage to replicate the D pose, but only after falling down a flight of stairs. And side note, what did this illustrator have against the letters J and U? Either way, if you want to show me some love, make sure to subscribe. Ha! See what I did there? But for real, like, comment, subscribe, sign here, sign here, and you'll eternally belong to me. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, let's get back to some dreadful designs before anyone gets suspicious. <laughs> When it comes to interior design, we all have different tastes. My current interior design aesthetic is sad man in his 30s who lives in his mom's basement. However, there are some interior design choices that are unanimously, well, hideous. For example, some design demon out there conjured up this apple bottom jean chair. I mean, forgive me for preferring my chairs without two pairs of knees and a whole load of junk in the trunk. That aside, something that often annoys me is that my bookshelf doesn't transform into a coffin. Well, with this design, all the problems of modern life are solved. Book storage and mortal realty, all wrapped into one with some simple reconstruction. And if that didn't fulfill your morbid aesthetic needs, then how about this chic, ultra-practical casket trailer? Hold on, Grandma. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. But back to interior design now and just take a look at this mural spotted in a Vietnamese cafe. Tea makes Shutterstock everything better. Ah, uh, just what Mama always used to say. Clearly, the mural artist behind this took the reference image quite literally as they included the Shutterstock watermark. Seems likely that there may have been a slight language barrier, not to mention a refusal to pay to license an image, <laughs> resulting in this terrible, albeit hilarious, design. Now, when it comes to interiors, staircases can be a great opportunity to create a tasteful feature piece. However, when in the wrong designer's hands, things can quickly take a turn for the worst, figuratively and literally. Like with this maze-like no banister staircase, or as I call it, a death trap. Not only is there a dizzying arrangement of steps, but the lack of banister primes anyone using this staircase for a tumble, particularly after a few Shirley Temples. Outside the home, some dim-witted designers have just as hard of a time. Rooted in ancient Greek and Roman architecture, columns are often used to exert exuberance and wealth, which I'm imagining was the intention here, though the execution is an absolute eyesore. I mean, not only is the style and color way off in comparison to the house, but they're not even centered. Honestly, this house just gets worse the longer you look at it. Similarly offensive to the eyes is Caldwell Tower, which may not look so bad in this old photo, but just you wait. This 16th century tower is located in Scotland and was formerly part of a larger courtyard castle. Understandably, having stood a few hundred years, by 2012 it was looking a little worse for wear, so it went under restoration. While I'd like to say it was a delicate restoration that appropriately reflected the tower's history, the result was this blue-cladded monstrosity. And the ironic thing is, the extension looks far more dated and out of fashion than the centuries-old tower itself. For some people, though, a home's functionality takes precedence over its curb appeal. Case in point, this teetering static caravan, which one Redditor has likened to a, quote, redneck penthouse. Presumably a flooding precaution, the house seems to be stilted on stacks of cinder blocks that look as if they might topple any moment. 
or potentially walk off into the sunset to the great trailer park yonder. Unfortunately though, as is often the case with designers that should go to hell, safety isn't always a priority. Like for example, this not so merry-go-round. Yep, one half turn on that and you're on a one-way trip to Headless Town. Even more dangerous, back in 1952, there were growing claims that smoking causes cancer. As a result, cigarette manufacturer Kent Cigarettes decided to design a cigarette with a filter that was stuffed with asbestos. The idea was that fireproofing properties of asbestos would protect its smokers. Ironically, back then they didn't understand that asbestos is also incredibly carcinogenic and is specifically likely to cause lung cancer. Asbestos cigarettes, two sources of cancer for the price of one. What a steal. Even more terminal, why not sit back and enjoy your asbestos smokes on this bench that's deathly designed to become electrified after 11 p.m.? Jokes aside, this bench is actually an art installation by artist Foka Wolf as a statement against anti-homeless benches, which are designed to be impossible to sleep on, some of which I have covered in previous episodes of this series, so make sure you go ahead and check them out. But if you're ravenous to see more terribly designed benches, as I'm sure you are, then I've got a couple more in stall for you. I mean, just check this one out. For some bizarre reason, each bench is aligned with a skylight hole at this outdoor shopping mall, rendering them and the people sat on them completely soaked in the event of rain. It's often a fine line between a lack of foresight and a diabolical sense of humor. In a similar vein, the designer behind these stadium chairs had a comparable lack of consideration for people's comfort. I can only imagine sitting in these would be truly a pain in the neck. Sure, we've seen some pretty crappy designs so far, but none arguably as horrifying as this makeshift macerator. A macerator, if you didn't know, is a machine that essentially blends solid matter, oftentimes human waste, into liquid for easy disposal. This one just happens to be made DIY style from a blender. While it looks like this one is being used under a kitchen sink to get rid of post-washing dishes food waste, I can't shake the horrible feeling that what we're essentially seeing here is a poop smoothie. A poothy, if you will. In a similar occurrence of kitchen appliance repurposing, take a look at this slapdash water heater utilizing a kettle and pipes to generate hot water in a way that looks like it shouldn't work, but actually does. Cup of tea for me please, governor. Now, if what we've seen so far wasn't already enough of an excuse to throw out your laptop and log off the internet forever, then just check out these rocks with teeth. Yep, for some bizarre reason, one person decided to create these homemade rocks adorned with creepy pearly whites to sell online as whimsical porch rocks, all for the low, low price of just $10. A bargain, if you ask me. Though you can only imagine how terrifying it would be stumbling upon these on someone's porch at night. Even scarier, though, is this custom Nintendo Switch controller created by truly diabolical Redditor, Anonymofix. Yep, this absolute mad lad modified his controller to put a sliding knife in it. You know, for those really intense Mario Kart tournaments. But if we're talking about tech modifications, then you have to check out this brand new iPhone that comes with a removable screen, or as I call it, the iPhoney. Thoughts and prayers to anyone who actually bought one of these duds, which are pretty much just low-power flashlights in a box, intended to illuminate the transparent Apple logo on the screen, giving the illusion of a real functioning phone. Now that is devious. And we all know how infuriating it can be when things don't work as expected. Another example might be this microwave, which can only be controlled when the door is open, as the door completely conceals the buttons when closed. Not unusable by any means, but just inconvenient enough to make using it a pain in the butt. But even guiltier of lacking functionality is this card whose design team is just, just awful. When opening this card, the packaging would suggest that the card will play the 2004 Killers classic, Mr. Brightside, so you can mush along to it. But the disappointing reality is there is no music chip in this card at all. Instead, it just directs you to this pathetic QR code on the back, which in turn directs you to this website, which then directs you to one of those streaming services before you can even listen to the song. Some business executives really are sick in the head. On to more dreadful designs, did you know that the Mac Pro doesn't even have locks on its wheels? Which, as you can see, means it can just roll right away. 
Though if Apple's reputation is anything to go by, then they probably sell a $1,000 wheel lock add-on. Considering the wheels themselves already cost $400 to add to the machine, it's not that far-fetched. And online commenters have delivered some hilarious joke solutions to the rollaway Mac problem, like this Wedge Pro design shared on Twitter. But it's not just Apple trying to pry every penny from you, but Snapchat too. Or should I say, Snapchat Plus? Yep, for $40 a year, you can enjoy absolutely no benefits. That is, unless you consider having a custom app icon, pinned best friend, and the ability to get rid of their annoying AI bot benefits. If you have to pay to get rid of an alleged quote-unquote feature, I'd say that tells you the designers know it's annoying as hell. For as long as technology has existed, though, there have been obstacles for users. And one of the most annoying ones that most of us face on the daily are CAPTCHAs. You know, the grid of obscure images you have to select to prove you're not a robot. Now, ordinarily, I am, of course, able to discern a bicycle from a bus, but this one asking the user to select the image of a, quote, elephant made of clowns is just plain weird. This is likely a way to train Google's AI image generating software, meaning it's just another way modern tech companies are profiting off of your attention and internet bandwidth. Yippee! Similarly, frustrating are these terms and conditions. While on one hand it claims that the user's precise location is optional, it won't actually let them agree to the terms and conditions without allowing their precise location. It's almost as if phones are trying to track our every move. No, surely not. <laughs> <sighs> Graphic design is arguably one of the most important types of design nowadays. It's what compels us to buy products, visit web pages, read books and magazines, and so on. That isn't to say that all graphic design is exactly good, though. Take this, for example, which one person's teacher actually revered as a good example of graphic design. Perhaps the teacher needs glasses, too, because all I can see is a whole load of <coughs> As a graphic designer, it's important to consider the placement of your work. How so? Well, just take a look at this disaster that occurred on a pack of Fontide water. Yep, a face only a mother could love. Anyone else getting blobfish vibes? In a similar instance of poor placement, one model in a magazine seemingly had an unfortunate visit from Mrs. Diarrhea. I doubt the advertisers who paid for that were all too pleased with that particular layout. But with bad graphic design lurking all around us, sometimes you have to have an eagle eye in order to avoid falling victim to it. And it's just as well that this Redditor spotted this misleading instruction not to microwave their food container, hidden under a flap that initially seemed to suggest the opposite. Speaking of potential fire hazards, a quick glance at this ad may lead you to think it's a beastly fire-breathing machine, which if you ask me is just a little too extreme of a way to advertise a heater. Hard to believe that someone stepped back from this, looked at it and thought, perfect, good to go. But the sad truth is, oftentimes designers will deliberately attempt to deceive you with sneaky designs and straight up lies. I mean, just look at this candy eyeball. When you pull back the hood, you quickly realize you've been lied to the whole time by a printed packaging overlay. Heartbreaking as that is, at least the actual product is mostly still there. The same cannot be said for this sandwich. Or should I say, scamwich, which packs two pathetic semi-slices of meat. But of all the scam-laden designs out there, there are none quite as deliberate as this one from Kingfisher Beer. Looking at this, you can understandably assume it contains 8% alcohol. However, if you really zoom in, you'll see that in the tiniest font, it says less than 8%, barely visible to the naked eye, let alone a drunken eye. While Kingfisher may have tried to disguise its deception, this next product is pretty brazen about it. As you can see, there are two personal hotel kits, one male, one female, both providing essentials such as shampoo and toothpaste. And while the two kits' contents are completely identical, beside the color, the male kit is unbelievably just $7.59, while the female equivalent is $9.99. Outrageous. Though if you ask me, you can't put a price on pink. On the topic of colors, have you ever wondered what Harry Potter house you belong to? Now I'm indisputably a heroic Gryffindor. Though with this bath bomb, which functions as a sorting hat, dissolving into one of the four house colors, the designer clearly didn't put much thought into the visual when someone was assigned Hufflepuff, the yellow house. I don't think I really need to explain why this is a problem. Don't drink the yellow bathwater, folks. 
Have you encountered any laughably bad designs you think should appear on the next episode of this series? If you have, email me at stories at beamaze.com for a chance to be featured. Catch you in the next one, and thanks for tuning in.